Getting results from PostgreSQL using hooks. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how can we use hooks into a DAG in order to interact with the PostgreSQL database. First, check that the web server and the scheduler are running and you are using local executor as it should appear into the configuration file. So let's copy the DAG hook underscore DAG from the Airflow files folder to the DAGs folder of Airflow. Now we open the DAG with Vim from the DAGs folder. Okay, if you carefully take a look at the imports, you can already know that this DAG uses a Postgres hook to interact with the database, a Python operator to execute a Python function, and a dummy operator which basically does nothing. Next, we have the default arguments with the owner, start date, number of retries when a task fails, and so on. Then we have a Python function named getActivatedSources where all the magic operates. I specially added a comment next to each line of code in order to help you to understand what's going on in this function. So the first line corresponds to the request we're gonna execute using hook. It basically gets all the data coming from the course.source table. The second line instantiates a Postgres hook with the connection ID postgre underscore SQL that must be created from the Airflow UI. So let's create this connection. Go to the UI, admin, connections, create, connection ID postgres underscore SQL, connection type postgres, host localhost, schema airflow underscore mdb, login airflow, no password, and the port is 5432. Save the connection. Perfect, the connection has been successfully created. Now we can go back to the DAG. So the Postgres hook connects to the Postgres SQL database using the connection we just made from Airflow. Then we get this connection from the hook with the function get underscore con, which allows the access of the database cursor. The Postgres SQL cursor helps to maintain a persistent connection to the Postgres SQL database and encapsulate a query in order to read the result of this query a few rows at a time. It is extremely useful in case of you have a very large dataset to process, which could cause a memory overflow error. The following lines execute the request using the cursor and will log each row of the result to the standard output as you're gonna see in a minute. Finally, this DAG contains basically two tasks. The first one is start task, which does nothing. And the second one is a hook task, which uses a Python operator to call the function getActivatedSources. Okay, before running the DAG, let me show you quickly the content of the table we're gonna display using the Postgres hook. To do so, close the file and type psql-d for database airflow underscore mdb. Now you are logged into Postgres SQL, type select all from course.source. Enter and we get four rows. Each row corresponds to the name of a database with a boolean value activated set to true or false. So now let's trigger the DAG. Go to the Airflow UI, DAGs, and as usual, turn on the toggle of the hook underscore DAG. Refresh the page. So one DAG run has been successfully executed, as you can see here as well as the two tasks it contains as shown here. Notice also the special notation here to schedule the DAG. At once, signify that this DAG is gonna be run only one time. So if you want to trigger this DAG another time, you have to click on this button to manually trigger it. Click on it. Okay. Another DAG run is running. Click on refresh. And we have another successfully executed DAG run. Okay, now click on the DAG. Grab view and click on hook underscore task. View log. Scroll down and as you can observe, the Postgres hook has successfully fetched the data since we have those four lines in the log corresponding to the row stored into the table course.source. Just few important notes before moving to the next video. The parameter schema into the Postgres hook function corresponds to the database name you want to connect with Postgres SQL. Postgres underscore con underscore ID is the connection created from the Airflow UI as we have done into the connection view. There are many official hooks such as Presto hook, SQLite hook, Slack hook and so on that you can use and you can find also many very interesting unofficial hooks created by the community such as Sparksegment hook to kick off a Sparksegment job, FTP hook, Jenkins hook and so on. So that's it for this concept. See you in the next video.